So I'll share this. Um, I've, I've talked about this before, but it's been a few months, and so that is probably lost on us. Because so much of this is perception. Do you have the eyes to see? Are you using them? How are you using them? Of course you do have them. Just the question, are you using them? How are you using them? Okay. Language and such a hypnotic thing, it, it disguises for us what's going on. Like when I was looking at it, Teo, and it's like, oh, all these people are, I saw something that was unhappy, problem. And then, you know, I saw all the beauty everybody was creating with beautiful art and the love they were putting into all their expressions and the food and the dance and the music and the clothes. I saw beauty. Nothing in the external world changed. Only my internal world changed. The outside world was still the same. And I felt completely different. <clears throat> now there's a there's a case to be made. Did I change my internal world? Or did I look at a different version of it? Is that the same thing? Yeah, maybe all those realities are all going on at the same time, or maybe my story was only inside, I should say. Um, but the case to be made is, Maybe it's all my internal world. This, this takes a bit of stretch of the imagination. <clears throat> we'll start with sound. This is the story, the question. If a tree falls in the forest and there's no one there to hear it, does it make a sound? Okay. I'm going to cut to the chase. The answer is no. It does not make a sound. A tree falling in the forest and hitting the ground makes vibrational waves through the air. And you don't hear vibrational waves through the air until your eardrum picks up that vibrational waves and it goes through the bones or something, whatever that shakes around in the eardrum. And that vibrates in your ear. And that changes little electrical signals in the nerve system into something like electrical signals, I suppose. And that goes to your brain. And then your brain produces a sound for you to experience. This perception mechanism in a body creates sound for you to experience from vibrational waves that don't make any noise until they're converted by your ears. All the sound you hear is created by you. Is that clear? And we don't 
talk about it this way. We use the hypnosis of language to say, oh, I heard that music. I heard that tree fall. I hear the sound of the car or the leaves rustling or the wind. I hear those things as if what's making the sound is outside of us. Just like we say, I watch the sunset or I watch the sunrise, like, no. You're experiencing the earth spinning and you're turning into the sun and you're turning away from the sun. Turning into the sun and the earth in the morning and away from the sun at night. But as long as we say the things like, oh, I watched the sunset, I watched the sun rise, we're in the illusion that the sun is moving. When we're moving, we've got it backwards. But if we say, well, I heard that car go by, we're not acknowledging I'm creating the sound of that car <laughs> based on the vibration of air. I'm creating it all. I'm creating sound. I'm experiencing sound. I'm creating the sound of music. Or drumming. Based on those vibrating air molecules vibrating around. Me. Are you with me so far? This human, this human sensory body is amazing. And here's the one that's the biggest illusion. Everything you see, you're creating. Look outside. <clears throat> It has the appearance that I'm looking at a tree. That's the appearance. Just like it appears that the sun is moving. But I might be looking at the opposite of a tree, right? For one, because the light that's hitting that tree is bouncing off and going into my eye. And the colors I see are the ones that are reflected, so the ones that aren't absorbed. So the colors, it's actually being absorbed by that tree, which actually might be the color it is. Like a black object absorbs all the light, doesn't reflect any. But the stuff that's bouncing off, is the stuff that's not absorbed, it's not at that frequency. So I'm seeing the stuff that's not at that frequency. So I'm seeing the stuff that's not absorbed. I'm seeing the stuff that's not the tree. <laughs> okay. So, but let's leave that aside for a bit. Bounces off the tree, absorbed into my eye. I don't look out and see the tree over there. I have light come into my eye. Yeah. Even flips it upside down and bounces on the back of the eye. Fires off the rods and cones, and electrical signals, all then go off into this optical nerve. It's electrical signals, what pulses from billions of sensors. You know, it's much in the way that it's a camera is pointed here. Camera's pointed at me. This camera 
then converts that into electrical signals for all every pixel and sending it to the wires to you. That's what your eye is doing. You don't have an image on your screen of me. You, you've got now a bunch of electrical signals. And what is the, the display monitor you're looking at? It takes those signals and it converts it to a picture. Your picture on your screen. And your eye and your brain do the same thing. Those electrical signals from your eye go to your brain and the brain takes those electrical signals and says, let me paint you a picture. that represents the world outside. Here is a virtual version. Here's my, our, our, my eyes, my brain's interpretation of what the light is telling us. And displays for you a picture of the tree, whatever it is. And so my, now my brain has created an image of a tree and then it tells me through this illusion of depth perception and binocular, it's like created two of them. <laughs> it says, well, let's map them over and let's know from learned distance, like it appears that tree is out there in the distance of 50 feet away. It gives me the presentation of distance. My brain does. And my brain orders all the light coming in, which has no distance reference. Light coming in is just light coming in, it has no distance. But my brain says, well, this eye is giving me this one, this eye is giving me this one. So let me take those two images of firing pixels of light and let me present now a three dimensional hologram and order things in distance all around you. Let me build that world, that virtual world, inside your brain and show it to you as if it's outside. And now I have inside my said this whole virtual world presented to me that represents, simulates, Copies the light coming in. I see see some presentation of what probably is outside based on the light. Some version of what's outside. And everything I see is really my creation. Using the light from a, coming through my eyes to my brain. This is what I create based on the light coming in from the world. It's all kind of done automatically. I don't have to think about it. And so I live in a hologram that tricks me into thinking I'm seeing outside me. You follow? This is how your mind, brain, eyes create a virtual world. It's your world. What you see, what you hear. Also, because everything's an interpretation, 
goes through a nervous system of sensing what you smell, what you taste. And the sense that we're walking in a virtual reality is absolutely true because everyone is walking into their own version of the walking around their own version of the world, believing they see the same common one. Well, there is a common one out there. And everybody makes their own creation based on it. Yes, Lisa. It's funny because as you talk, the word, if I say representation, Gary's talking about my representation of the external world. Well, peanut brain's fine with it. But if I say creation, peanut brain throws a fit. It's, it, it's like, um, I don't know, those two different words have a whole different reaction inside. It's like creation means um, something is not really there. And I'm just, uh, or, or I'm bringing it into being versus, and it, it's like the creation would mean that it's outside of me and that's what's being manifested versus representation is something that is physically real out there. And now I'm taking all those vibrations and, and kind of um, receiving them and sorting through them and then but as far as creating the meaning of them, that seems very realistic. And I don't as, think as far as creating the what of them, the the meaning, as in um, this crowd is is oh my god too much, or this crowd is beautiful. I don't know. It's just I, I just get the sense of that my internal world. Even even listening to the words um, takes them and completely has a different meaning based on the word create versus represent. Interesting. And a whole different experience. It's um, yeah. Okay. Crazy. Yes, Sean. I think we could describe this a lot of different ways. Um, we could say our body is creating this experience. Body, sensory, nervous system, and brain creating this experience. We can say we are given a representation. We are building a simulation. My simulation of this world <laughs> shows me this, you know, when my individual virtual reality screen display shows me this. And then, you know, and, and so you'll interpret those different words, maybe with a different feeling. And then we tell our story, we add a narrative story on top of it. Oh. This is beautiful. Oh, that's just ugly, and all these people, all these problems. We get to put a narrative dialogue on top of our, our representative world or how the world presented to us. Okay. And that gives it, that's its own world. We can go into a story and experience of that. That's really true and that feels real. Now our whole nervous system is giving us feedback about, oh, that's just terrible. Or nervous system gives us a feedback, oh, this is beautiful. The part we do get 
agency over is the kind of story we tell and whether we believe it or not. Sometimes a lot of the stories we tell, we, we don't get to control. They're, they're automatically there till we go and change them. And the more skill you have of believing them or not believing them changes how you feel. But certainly, yes, I'd say our body, eye, brain as its own system is presenting it to us this way and not us. But we do get a say in the part of the story we tell or the story we believe about it. Depending on how much control we have over the narrative stories in our internal dialogue. So it's another element of experience at the same time. Oh, this is beautiful, or oh, this is terrible. Then that becomes your creation. Is this clear how it's a representation, a virtual reality, simulation, that your own brain is making visually of the world outside? And the way that I feel it that way is when I kind of go, because if I look at it, it all looks outside. I mean, I go, no, that's out there. That's it's what my brain is registered, it's out there and it's all real and that's really a tree. But if I shift my perception, some way in a way, if you've ever had a dream or a specifically a lucid dream, you become aware that you're dreaming in a heightened state of that awareness, you sense, oh my God, this whole dream is my creation. And you have a sense that like you're the one building this world. And so the way I shift it is if I look out at this world and I imagine my consciousness, my energy, my sense of self out there into the trees. And they feel like they're inside me. Even though my eyes presentation of it and my brain's presentation says it's outside. I can feel it inside it. In my mind's eye, hold it inside me. So that's one way I shift perception to, to feel that it's my world that I'm creating. Miss Jasper. How far does it go, Gary? Do you actually feel? Do you actually? So feeling in an emotional sense or, you know, from that different perception where Or do you go so far that you almost dream into like what the what the leaves would be feeling or what the trees, you know, is it more of a, do you understand what I'm asking? I, I don't feel each individual leaf or individual tree like that unless I like really put my attention into it in a specific way imagination but if i put my attention say in the forest then i feel just this general feel mm -hmm. and then if you if you i get that experience to you then you can dream what it would feel like to be that tree i guess my curiosity is like if it's actually possible to move your consciousness outside of your body. I don't think I'm making sense. It's okay. Let's, let's move. Okay. On. Okay. Yes, it's possible. And 
do you have to move your consciousness outside your body when all the light is already moved into my body and I already have a, a copy to work with? That tree, that mountain, the sun is already inside me or at least a version of it is already inside me. And the light has consciousness to bring it inside of me. And am I exploring something that's outside or am I exploring something that's really inside and appears outside? But in parallel, while all of that is happening, you can still perceive your body because it's, yeah. it appears to be outside, but it's all, okay. Yeah. I guess I just have this curiosity whether you ever leave your body. That, that line, I'm, the answer is for me, yes. Okay, but I'm not really good at keeping track of it. Okay. Well, that's, that's something else. That's us aware of ourselves as consciousness inhabiting this body and it's our host and that we can actually move out of at times. I think my, my journey here with this topic has been to what is perception, creation, experience, which is creation of the story versus creation of light, creation of your world, and in that way, taking responsibility for it, and also connecting you closer to it. It's not out there. In the model that I'm presenting to you, I'm presenting to you something that allows you to feel it much more closely inside, even though it's virtual, you're closer to it, in my experience. I'm not separate from my creation. I'm experiencing ownership of the way my body, my nervous system, this sensory being is building my world. And the, the world that's outside that it's basing on I don't know exactly what's out there. But I get to know intimately my perception of it, my reactions to it with my stories. No, oh, there's too much of this. There's not enough of that. I get to feel that and own it as what I'm creating. Or, oh, 